Well, welcome to another Travels with Trigger, an adventure. We have, are driving out of our last destination, Council Rocks, and we're going to be trying to drive around the mountain rather than all the way back to Tombstone. And it should be quite an adventure. I'm not really sure what we're going to have on uh, this road, other than right now, a lot of bump bumpiness. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned and we'll see what happens. We are on our way to Cochise Stronghold. Welcome and, and enjoy the view. Right. Look at those great rocks. But, All right, so we have a... <laughs> hey, no bar. Hey. And see, Trigger loves horses. Trigger loves horses. Not the cow hog for sure. Carol thought this would be camera worthy here. <laughs> so I turned the camera on. It's nice seeing how this road is going to probably go through these mountains here, the Dragon Mountains. And it's not a horrible road. Yet. There are some roads off of it that look like pretty horrible roads. She saw some switchbacks going up one of the mountains. She says, I don't think that's our road. I said, that is not our road. <laughs> yeah, that is not our road. Yeah, so I thought I'd turn the camera on here and you could see in the hill that there was a burn. We've been seeing these yuccas or whatever. You can see this agave right here in the front. Kind of looks like a pineapple. What? Pineapple. Yeah, we have this hairpin turn coming up here. Boy, I hyperlapse this road. Well, we've uh, come out of the past, and I would say this about the past, is that going through the road was not bad, bumpy. I mean, I would assume any car could do that. Now, it has limited maintenance, so I suppose there could be times when after a rain or something that you wouldn't want to take your Corvette. We have forgot, or I have forgotten, that uh, we are going to be headed to a museum, a wonderful museum, the American Indian or Amarin Museum and Dragoon. The grounds and everything are spectacular. I'll be turning on the camera as we go in. I mean, it looks like it was an old kind of Spanish style villa and maybe cattle ranch. It's a beautiful place. Uh, yeah, it is really gorgeous. Definitely so worth a visit and it's, Dragoon is like right off the main highway. And they're closed on Mondays, so we need to go there now. Yeah, it's Sunday, so. Yeah. Carol did inform me but the grounds are beautiful, which I can photograph, but possibly they do not allow photography in the museum. I don't know exactly how far we're driving down here, so I thought I'd turn the camera on and I have Carol getting a photograph as well of these rocks ahead. I think that's Cochise Stronghold. I'm almost positive that's what it is. Yeah, so here's the Tyrannosaurus and the horse. And you have a Stegosaurus of like here. Carol's filming this with the iPhone, so here's an Indi huh. Indian an Indian on a shooting. All snakes are protected here. It just says enter at your own risk, not responsible for accidents. So you can go in. I don't think we need walk to go around. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah, I think what we'll do, maybe, maybe on the way back from the museum, we might stop. I don't know. So here we are at the Amarind. So I got the camera on because, like I said, the grounds here are just spectacular. I don't know where they start. Where oh, it's probably way up there, a little ways. Beautiful rock formations all around. A oh, cemetery. Old Cemetery, Texas Canyon Pioneer Cemetery. But I get the sense that this must have been somebody's cattle ranch or some kind of ranch or something. I would take this property. <laughs> yeah. I think I could live here. Uh, even with the hot summers, I could live here. Nice little uh, rock formation hill over here to the right. Like it has a whole castle on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're still in the 
Dragoon Mountains area for this game. Dragoon. I don't know whose house that was. You know, caretakers maybe. Yeah, <laughs> caretakers. Bird pond hikers check in here. No pets. Here's a bird pond. Now we usually leave trigger, and it's turning out it's overcast. So we will probably be leaving. Now you get kind of a view here of that villa that once was. Yeah, like I said, I could live here. That's pretty spectacular. I could live here. There's a water tank here on the left. Here. I know. Fruitlessly attempting to do something with my hair. Ha! I'm going the to. Terminal uh, case of hat hair. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just drive the loop once so you can get a view. Look at these. The house there, and then look at these That's rocks. That's a private residence there. Yeah, look at the But rocks. the picnic area is back in here. They've got an art gallery as well as uh, the yeah, this gal Yeah, this gallery here had more like modern art, and I could, or contemporary art, let's say. And I know you don't necessarily want to be photographing that, but um, we'll see when we get in here. I think it'd be great to have nice rock formations around your house like this. Kind of cool. To say that's the modern museum, and then the Amaru Museum is up here, the entrance. Beautiful place. Yeah, well, I saw this uh, tree, the way it designed there, it kind of looked like a person laying on the rocks. Well, we've now come out of the museum, and I thought I'd just drive around to the picnic area. A little more of the grounds here. Oh man, what great rock for And if you have kids with you, <laughs> yeah, you can wear them out by letting them climb all over the rocks. No, do not Please climb on rocks. Do not climb on rocks. Kind of reminds me a little of Joshua Tree. Oh well, man, I was in a fright. Can't camp in here. I like the black mark. I'm gonna get out that. and take a picture. A tree there is growing out of a pool in the rock. Cool pictures. Check them out. Yeah. You know, the, the museum itself is great because it doesn't follow any one particular tribe. It actually has several of the American tribes' artifacts and such. That it included up in the uh, Arctic Circle. Yeah, it went all the way up Alaska. into Alaska yeah. area. It also had Peru and Mexico. It has quite a bit of different things. I wouldn't say that they have a super extensive of any one thing, but they have a lot of different things. Yeah, a wide you know? variety. It's, it's a wonderful museum, beautiful inside. It's uh, 12 bucks a person, and I think it's worth it. And they have just wonderful jewelry. Some of it's old and some of it modern. Well, it's talking about the tradition of jewelry making with the Native American population. Cool. Anyway, we are now back on our way to Cochise Stronghold, and if you haven't figured it out already, it's pretty cloudy. And windy. And as a result, it also is pretty darn cold again. We'll see you at camp. Well, we are in the Coronado National Forest here in Cochise Stronghold, and uh, I think the actual developed kind of campground is at still... At the end of the road. Yeah, it's at the end of the road, so it's still almost two miles down here. There's some boondocking spots back in there. There will be boondocking spots all along here. Um, you got some of these like, really, really nice rock formations here that we've been seeing in this part of southern Arizona. Well, we are at our boondocking spot now here at Cochise Stronghold. I mean, these rocks back behind us, it's gorgeous. It isn't the most private area in certain ways. Now we're we're pretty far from anyone around us that's boondocking, but um, 
You don't have the high bushes like we had in some of the other boondocking spots. Uh, here, let me show you the area here. So as you can see here, basically trees and grasses and then some yuccas. So it might be a little more difficult for privacy if, since we don't have a toilet. Looks like we got the sun out there on those rocks. Yeah, nice, huh? Well, good morning. <laughs> We're still here at uh, Kochi Stronghold, and yes, I'm bundled up. It's uh, about 40 degrees, Wisconsin 40 all night. And, um, but it's extremely windy. It rained all night. I mean, it poured. And we're down kind of in this depression that we moved to last night. And I was a little worried, not so much for running water, but for maybe for pooling water down here. I mean, I, when I say it rained, it rained. I mean, it was, it was a hard rain at times. Our biggest concern was is we have a little hill we have to go up and we were afraid it might get a little soggy. I, I didn't remember the composition of it. Uh, so let me turn around and show you the area here. Here's the camp spot. Great spot. Again, I mean, it wouldn't have been great for us yesterday for solar because we're a lot closer to the hills and we've got all these trees. But for morning, solar, it's great if there was a sun. So you've got the solar out over here. This is the little hill we've got to go up. Nothing, you know, too extreme. But if it was sloppy, muddy, might be enough. I don't know how much or what we're going to get to do today with it being all wet and stuff. But I thought maybe I'd walk up behind camp here and just kind of give you all a look. This is a beautiful boondocking spot. The first time I came here, I was looking for the campground. Um, I didn't even know there was a boondocking area. And I got up to that camp host area and I was totally befuddled because I could not find a campground anywhere. There was no camp host around. So I kind of saw these dirt roads and said, well, gotta be able to camp out there, I assume. Yeah, you can see those clouds moving again. Hopefully it'll look on camera as fast as it's I'm seeing it. I almost don't need time lapse of moving so fast. But that's the kind of winds we have out here now. This is a really gorgeous area. You could hike around here. There's more hiking trails out of the campground actually, whereas this is all pretty much rock scrambling if you wanted to, you know, go somewhere. Or looks like people have beaten down the grasses out here. And I don't know about these grasses, but the grasses we had outside of Tombstone when we boondocked out there, man, they put so many thorns in my pants. I mean, it took me about three days to get them all out. And they're not really thorns, they're just like little short, stubby, stickery things that just kind of end up in your clothes. Just stuck for days with one and I could not figure out or find out. This is kind of interesting here. You know, it's hard for me to see it. I have my sunglasses on. Well, kind of backlit. It's almost like a little, you could put a tarp over this and hollow. It looks like it's hollowed out in the middle almost. Have a little shelter. These plants have a lot of small little stickery things, but here, yeah, this is huge amount of, I don't know if I was showing you earlier, the piles of this kind of bush that were obviously intentionally cut and stacked up. So I don't know if this is kind of an, either an invasive or just a unwanted species of plant that uh, could take over and then no one could camp out here or what. You know, it's absolutely gorgeous out here this morning after the rain. Obviously now when the wind blows, we're not getting dust, but the dust wasn't too bad here. So, Trigger's waiting and hoping. No. <laughs> Uh, chili and eggs this morning. We had chili dogs last night with bacon. And I have a warm tortilla coming. Mm -hmm. Life doesn't get better than this. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, Carol, you keep jumping right behind me. Anyway, beautiful area. Beautiful area. This is Kochi Stronghold. Oh, and uh, just kind of the history of it is, is that apparently this was the area that Cochise used to thwart the military. 
uh, that was trying to get him for causing some havoc around the areas. And uh, legend is, is that he is buried somewhere in these hills. And I heard someone say that uh, one of the things the Native Americans said, and I don't know if it was all of them or just the Apache, you know, this was a Chiricahua Apache. What they would do is they would bury their dead and then they'd run their ponies over the area, kind of compacting the earth and also um, hiding the fact that anything was there. You know, just kind of making it all look trampled and uh, nothing unusual about a spot, fresh dirt or anything like that. Everything would just kind of become oh the same so yeah this is a great area um a lot of history here and then uh, of course you know we were at council rocks yesterday and the history there of uh cochise or, yeah cochise meeting with the military to negotiate various hence sundry things uh not attacking the homesteaders or something. So, all right. So we're gonna get uh, packed up and on our way to the other side of the Chiricahua Mountains to hopefully Sunny Flats Campground. Great peaks. I just love mountain peaks, rocky mountain peaks like this. I like the other kind too, but this is kind of what I just, Always different. Always different.